Go ahead. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Good Deeds Note Investing Podcast Open Mic. I am your co host, Gail Anthony Greenberg, here with the lovely Christopher Seveny. Hey, Chris. Hey, Gail. How are you this evening? <laughs> your hair's looking com- especially fetching tonight, I must say. I got a cut last um, week, so it's actually, it was out of control, but. <laughs> New product, is it? No, actually, I just got a shower, actually. So. Oh, that's the difference. We've never seen Chris freshly showered before. Actually, so. do every Thursday I'm freshly showered, actually. But. <laughs> Um, So we've already hit the start button here, and we have a guest who is a friend and note investor, actually very close to me, a fellow Pennsylvanian from the Harrisburg area, for those of you who know, for those few of you who pay attention to Pennsylvania geography. Um, Patty Pedd is joining us to talk about a special property she has in a little place in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan called Mansalona. So I'm very eager to hear about the whole thing. Patty, do you want to uh, start from the top? Yes, hello Chris and hello Gail. Thank you for having me on. No problem, thank you for joining us. (laughs) This evening. Your sound was not good at that moment. Uh Uh-oh. I was just now, saying, how, how are you both doing this evening? Great, great. Yeah, now I can hear you perfectly. Yep, yeah, good. Busy day. Busy yes. day today. A lot going on. But, a lot going uh, on. <laughs> so what's, what's happening in your world in, in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan? <laughs> so um, I recently bought three CFDs, two in Michigan and one in Mississippi. Um, the M- Michigan one, the Mansilona, it's a pretty rural area. They have a horse. I don't want to call it a farm, but they are equestrians. So they, I think they used to have a business. And it's a 20-acre land, um, wooded area. Uh, the house is currently yeah. vacant. It's a contract for deed. The house is currently vacant. I'm trying to get in touch with the owner. Um, but it has changed so many hands that um, I think there's like six or seven companies before ours. So um, I've just been working on that a little bit, trying to get everything in place and trying to see if I have any original documents and turns out I don't, I did not receive anything. So I'm going back and getting that. Um, But my question for you both is actually, regarding my other asset, which is in Mississippi, Yazoo City. Um, I bid on that. Yeah. You did? Yes. Okay. Looks like I... I and you got it. You took one from the big guy. You took one yeah. from the big guy. That's one for you on the big tote board. <laughs> I'll tell you what I bid too, and you can tell me if um, you can just remain <laughs> I, I, quiet. Or I was just saying that I would. I was saying that if you bid on it and I won, it means it probably means I paid too much for it. No, I think you bid on it at a different time, right, Chris? Like a couple months mm-hmm. ago, maybe. Uh, I bid. So hold on, I'll tell you what I bid. <laughs> I'm open, but well, keep plus this particular seller it's not about competitive bids as we right. know it's whoever That's bids true. first that is very true mm-hmm. um so i've been seeing a pattern i'm doing collateral reviews from this same seller and i'm seeing a pattern where i don't see i see or i have the original note but i'm not seeing assignments of these notes how well, these are our CFDs, right? Right, yes. So are you saying How? there was a note initially and then it got turned into a CFD or you're well, talking about, okay. Well, when I say note, it's a sign. I have three documents for every, or mm-hmm. let me go back, back up a little bit. So for the original, I have the original deed or land contract between the lender and the borrower. And then I have an original note between the lender and borrower, which is 
kind of similar to the, the land contract, but this one just talks about the money, how much, what's right. the monthly payment, what's the interest rate, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So for some of these um, assets, I have these assignments of land con. Well, for all of them, I have assignments of land contract. Mm -hmm. um, and correct me if I'm wrong. So if I'm, I'm guessing that for each um, change of hands, so to speak, mm -hmm. I need to make sure that I have a warranty deed or a quit claim deed. Mm -hmm. And then the second one would be an assignment of the land contract. Yep. And the third one would be <laughs> an assignment uh, of the note or an allonge to the note. So, while I'm doing the natural review, I've come across a lot of them have the first two, the warranty deed or the quit claim deed and the assignment of land contract, but it, a, a lot of them are missing the assignment <laughs> of note or the allowance. Right. So, what are your comments on that? So, have you come across this? Is this something that I need to rectify or... What are your comments? Interest, interesting enough, I was on the phone with an attorney regarding the same exact issue today. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, but it, mine was in Oklahoma. And I oh, talked, Oklahoma, yeah. you have got to have your paperwork straight. Yes. So yeah. I've talked to Franco about this as well. Um, it's state dependent. Um, so for people listening on land contracts, there's two ways they get issued. Uh, there's the land contract, which includes the note language, so it's an all-in-one document. And then in some instances, it's a land contract with a separate note. And in certain states, basically, the note can sometimes be a confusion factor, and the attorneys are like, we don't need the note or the assignment. You have the deed with the land contract. You're good. Um, in other states, you need to have the note with the assignments and have it recorded and stuff like that. That's primarily in the states that treat a land contract like a mortgage so yeah i was gonna say that's real in my experience very unusual in michigan that is not the case and i don't think in mississippi either so i know in like oklahoma ohio maryland <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, those states i know basically if you have the note along with it that you know it should be um you know, recorded with the allonges and stuff. I don't know about Mississippi. Um, I could put you in touch. Um, do you know Beth Kruikshank at all, Patty? Yes, I did get in touch with her. That was going to be my next stop. I'm okay. putting together the the document, which is kind of a summary document. Mm -hmm. So I was going to send that over to her next and get her expert mm -hmm. opinion on this. Right. So, you know, I also had a conversation with Franco about this early on, because for whatever reason, when I was first in this business, it seems like everything I bought was in Michigan. And he just said to me, yes, every one of these window rock files in general has a promissory note plus a land contract. And he is like, they are not both necessary. And I mean, maybe in some places they might be, but they just confuse the matter um, because basically with a land contract in most states, not the picky ones that Chris just named, but um, all you need, and I've originated land contracts, is you just need a land contract. And then if you transfer the property, you need to deed it to the new owner and give them an assignment of land contract. And that's it. I've seen really complicated files where there was originally a borrower who had a note and mortgage, and then they um, either um, give up the house or they get foreclosed on, and then the lender immediately creates a land contract and like puts them back in the house, or they never left the house. So you get like that you have this giant file that goes back multiple lenders when it was a note and then multiple lenders after it became a land contract and you know you could just start crying looking through these files trying to figure out what's going on um, title reports are very good kind of tracking mechanisms because they the um those abstractors are very used to looking at all this stuff and they 
often put it in an order for you that's much easier to follow. Because mm -hmm. um, even the, like the electronic collateral files are often out of, out of sequence. You know, they've got like older things earlier in the file and then they've, you know, things are just out of order and it can just drive you crazy. But what I'm really thinking, and I, I don't even know why I'm asking you this, Patty, because I know the answer already. <laughs> like, you don't really have to um, be that concerned, I feel like, at this point, because you don't even really know what you're going to do yet in these. And you may never need this. And if you do need to get um, documents replaced or whatever, when you're going to do something legal and you ab absolutely need them, um, you know, they're gettable at that point. It's not like anyone's going to disappear in the meantime. Um, so I feel like I want to say to you, don't, you know, you don't have to spend hours and hours trying to like sort this all out at this stage. I personally would, you know, if, if you had an attorney review this before you bought it, then you should already have an answer about whether you're okay or not. If you didn't, and that would give you some peace of mind, by all means, go ahead and let them look at it. But if I were you, I wouldn't be spending my time <laughs> trying to figure it all out because it, it is really a mess. These things are really a mess. Uh, Pat, oh, I was gonna say, Patty, Patty, do you keep your own collateral or do you store it somewhere? We store them with Orion. You do? Okay, so Perfect. one thing that I would recommend is, and I'm going to share my screen right now. Um, so if you talk to, who, who do you deal with, Doreen, or who do you deal with over at Orion? Uh, I can't think of the name now. Okay, so I'm going to share my screen real quick because I want to share with you kind of what will answer your question as well. Um, let me know when you guys can see my screen. We can see it. There's nothing on it, but... Hey, there you go. Yeah. So they provide for every file I send them, they provide this report, which they show the subject property, the land contract information, and at the top they'll say chain of title status. We either say complete or broken, and they highlight what's missing. So they'll go through all the assignments, the deeds, you know, everything. And some of these, when there's like five, six, seven transactions they'll show every single assignment and then they'll show you like where it's broken. So, it, um, you know, it's similar to like a pro title report as well, where they show it in the middle, but they, I think do a little better job because they'll list all the allonges and everything else uh, as well. And I think they charge, um, if you do it with the soft copy and then when they get the actual collateral, I think the combined charge is like 40 bucks or $45. So it's, um, and what's nice too is you may have something in the soft file that doesn't show up in the hard file. That mm, and vice happen. versa. Yeah, Sometimes and, they don't scan everything that's in the hard file. Yeah. So they'll basically be like, oh, this is missing. Like I had one that they missed, the land contract was missing and it was in the soft file. So I went back to um, John at direct source and say, hey, what happened to the land contract? And, um, so, but this is an, you know, with Orion. Now, the other thing I'll mention to you that I little trick I did with Orion today, and let me just unshare my screen, is I was missing um, in Oklahoma one of those documents uh, that I needed. And lo and behold, I saw the chain where, you know, you look in the corner and it says, like, you know, when completed, when recorded, return to. And on all of them, mm -hmm. it said Orion. So I reached out to Ryan and said, hey, look, it looks like you did the um, assignment of land contract on this for Transportation Alliance Bank. Can you create the allonge for this? And they said, yep, well, you know, typically, yes, just let us get the permission and we'll create it for you. So that's another benefit I like about like using Orion is they create a lot of these docs. So if something's missing, they can easily go recreate it for you. Um, but one thing I'll mention for people who are new, um, Orion is a collateral storage company and um, you know typically they will only you typically have to have you know five plus um, you know loans with them uh, before they'll kind of let you board so let me just figure out now how to go back to unshare so, so related question i think this is great um i do have the pro title report and mm -hmm. 
that is being extremely useful only because we have so many uh, vendors or so many lenders involved in yeah. this. Um, so the, one of the questions I had was, if you found out that, say, lender number three and four, the documents were recorded um, in reverse order, say three was recorded first and two was recorded later, mm -hmm. and then all the other documents, four, five, six, seven, got record, recorded after. Mm -hmm. And um, Gail, I am at a position where I'm trying to, uh, where I'm boarding these loans with Franco and having him send the demand letters and um, uh -huh. um, okay. start the eviction process. Right. The process in Michigan. The Michigan one, right. Right. Um, and then for Mississippi, I was hoping to go to Beth uh, for, um, for eviction. So that's why I'm trying to get all the paperwork in order to do that. Um, <clears throat> So now my question is, and I kind of know the answer, but I want to get it from you experts. Um, do I go back and re-record everything in two, three, four, five, six, seven order? Mm, typically you can do what's called a corrective assignment. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. It's, right. a it's really, I mean, the what gives them their order is the date they're recorded, so you actually can't, you know. <laughs> Um, in strict terms, you can't redo it. Uh, but um, yeah, I mean, now that you have a lawyer engaged, I would just really follow their instructions about what needs to be done. Because obviously when you're underway with legal procedures, that dictates you know, what is required. And you certainly don't want to do anything extra. You'll have expense with the attorney anyway going through these, mm -hmm. this process. So, you know, you don't want to be spending mm -hmm. extra money doing things. You're probably going to find, certainly in Michigan, that the land contract is not recorded. Um, sometimes they are, but generally I find not in states that, doesn't that don't require it. Uh, believe me, Window Rock d does as little as possible. And you know, <laughs> whatever's the cheapest, that's what they do. I would also... And, yeah, go ahead. I was going to say, I'd also talk to Orion and, you know, just ask them, hey, these were recorded out of order because you are going to have to get somebody to sign that document that, you know, noted they were recorded out of order from one mm -hmm. of the prior owners. And like I said, a lot of times Orion is much better at getting something signed than Frank, you know, nothing, you know, than Franco, because again, Franco's an attorney who deals with this, but he's not dealing with, you know, writing the assignments or launches or, and you know, you might be able to hunt down who you need because a lot of those transfers are typically between Transportation Alliance and Bank, Home Opportunity, Home Solutions. There were chip funds. They're yeah. all the same. It's pretty yeah, a lot they're all related. the same entities. Um, so it's not as difficult sometimes to find the information. Yeah, I'd say I was like terrified to that, you know, there would be one piece of paperwork wrong and it would void my claim and my ability to foreclose or do a forfeiture on things. But it's actually pretty surprising how few things can't be fixed. Um, there was one situation that Chris ran across in Ohio, which is a very strict place where um, the land contract was recorded before the deed. So basically, you know, the people creating the land contract didn't have the right to sell the house. Like that, I think we discovered was like not correctable. But I've had crazy situations in Oklahoma now that we're talking about it. Like the real, I've never had a problem in doing a foreclosure or forfeiture with like some, you know, nasty paperwork or having, you know, uh, like funky problems, but what really is difficult is selling a house retail after it has been through this like mishmash of transfers and all these different things that have happened. And Oklahoma is one of those incredibly strict states. They not only, you know, not only do you have to have the quick claim deeds, but they usually want a power of attorney showing that the person who signed the quit claim deed was had the authority to do it they want all kind of, we just sold a house this was crazy patty so this in oklahoma i don't know if this is the norm but when harbor took back a property from a couple 
um, apparently in a, you know, cash for keys kind of situation, they had the couple sign a quit claim deed back to them. Well, this was several years ago. And when we tried to sell it after someone else had been in the house and we got them to cancel it, their land contract, we found out that that original couple, their quit claim deed didn't, didn't specify their marital status. They both had the same last name, but it didn't say that they were married to each other. And I was like, they had the same name. <laughs> Can we not assume? And they're like, no, because, and it turned out it wasn't that they were concerned about whether they were married to each other. They were concerned about whether they might've been married to other people. So like, cause they both signed the deed. So I was like, why do we care if they were married or not? They both signed, like, what's the big deal? They might've been married to other people. Like, oh <laughs> my, these title companies can think of so many scenarios. <laughs> and I had to hunt down this woman or she was widowed at this point. And like, you know, if you think it's hard to get people to, you know, get, take cash for keys, even after they've abandoned the house, try finding someone who's been gone for years and get them, you know, concerned enough to go to a notary and sign the, the uh, affidavit that has to be signed about their marital status. Crazy. crazy. I'm never going back to Oklahoma, Chris. You can have it. You can have the whole state. <laughs> Do it. I got three going on right now. In Oklahoma, so. <laughs> yes, I can tell you fire people to do all your fun question finding. Pop through was one about some about Orion and does Orion um, only do collateral reviews? I'm not sure. I don't believe so, but it's a question you could ask, um, or I can ask them. I have a call with them tomorrow. And then another one came through is does John only sell CFDs and um, it's, it depends. Some, most of the sellers that John represents or brokers sell CFDs. A few of them will have some notes as well. I know Kish North from, I forget the name of his North, whatever his entity is, or um, or Kish North is his name. I can't think of his entity. Mm -hmm. Portoli. Yes. What's that? Yeah, guy? Portoli. Portoli, yeah. Portoli. Portoli. Yeah. So he's, you know, sometimes John sells those, which are notes. I know, um, SN just released, um, I think it was last week or a week before it was, again, I saw those assets, um, you know, that they've been passed around a lot, um, <laughs> you know, <laughs> for many numerous reasons. Uh, so, you know, John sells different things. And then what does Orion charge for collateral review and boarding? Um, it's, you know, like I said, it's, I think it's $45 for them to review both files, um, mm -hmm. soft intake and they charge, it's a minimum $10 charge um, per month, uh, but like I have, you know, 70 plus files with them. So it's 25 cents per, um, you know, um, per like file up to, you know, so they charge me $10 a month basically, or it's what, you know, $25 because I have 75 files or whatever it is. Um, but it's, you know, 25 cents per file or per note, um, minimum of $10. So it's, I mean, very cost effective, but you know, perfect reason like today I had to Gail send the originals for this, this Oklahoma stuff to the attorney so it can get recorded. And, you know, if it was me and I was keeping my own collateral, you know, it, I, it's not often I can get to the post office or putting stuff in the mail. I send the email to them and they come back and say, you know, an hour later, they're like, oh, FedEx with tracking number and copy me and the attorney on it. It's already out the door. So um, yeah. for them to pull a file, I think it's like 20 bucks, which, you know, for me to drive to the post office and do everything and so forth, it's you know, well worth my time to pay them twenty dollars and me to run around to the post office to get there. Yes. So I did buy a note from John. So yes, it can happen. <laughs> and that was uh I don't know if that podcast is up yet, but I, I had this terrible little house in um Birmingham that uh I oh. bought as a as a performing note. And, um, and I've, heard, I've heard this so many times, you know, you buy a performing note and then the new owner never sees a payment after that. And that's exactly what happened with this. And 
um, I ended up foreclosing. Um, people had looked at the house for me. No one thought there was anything really wrong with it. I even had a property manager go and look at it and tell me what it would rent for once I fixed it up. But when I the, had the preservation company go, they, they looked a little closer and they were like, you know what, there's not really any point in fixing this because the walls, the exterior walls, which had um, wood cladding on them, were either termite eaten or just general rot inside. And they said like, we could literally just push these walls out with our hands. We're not going to, because we don't want the roof to fall on us. Um, but they were like, this is a tear down. And um, it truly is for me, because I live in Philadelphia and the house is in Alabama. So I'm not gonna, you know, preside over a complex uh, renovation and restoration of the house but um, after you know asking for tear like what does it cost to demolish a house like a little a little house that's falling over anyway um, I, it just occurred to me like I should just sell it you know it's like I don't want to try and fix it but you know it's still got some integrity to it so I put it up for sale on um, on Facebook marketplace and I I offered it for $100 under the title, this house sucks, so you can have it for less than a price of a new iPhone. And I had such a weekend interacting with people who are interested in buying a $500 house. But the bottom line is I sold it for more than $500 on a quick claim deed. So I didn't even have to pay the taxes for 2019 so far. So. I've got one that I may end up acquiring as part of this pool I have. There's one asset in there that has a house um, that definitely needs to come down. And it's basically, it's really a toss in, in this thing. And it needs to be knocked down. So I was curious if you've got pricing just for demo. But my thought process was I was going to try and top it one more and put on <laughs> Craigslist to say, you know, need something to destroy, come demo my house and see if <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Chris was very helpful. He suggested I call the fire department and ask if they wanted to burn it down. But I think it's a little too close to the other houses, which are all wood construction. <laughs> it's not an intentional burning of things in Alabama. Yeah, let me see so. if I can pop up this house that I'm pretty much <laughs> knocking down. Um, I haven't yeah. bought it yet, but... Um, Okay, so I just want to go on record. That is my second house that I've now lost money on. So St. Louis and Birmingham. I see you. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm not happy. But it was very entertaining, I have to say. And the guy who bought it wants to learn notes. And he, uh, he's now a listener. Now that's, that doesn't actually look that bad. Uh, <laughs> hold on, let me show you the front. <laughs> Like I should show you my little tear down since we were doing show and tell. Oh, okay. What's it made out of? <laughs> brick. Uh, brick. Oh, it looks like a gingerbread house. So, um, but yeah. Uh, let's see. Any other questions that people have coming through on CFDs? You know, another thing with CFDs that I'm learning that I'll have to share. And like I said, Gail, we might have to bring Franco on as well at some point because um, he's got a lot of experience. You know, I'm dealing with somewhere the borrower's deceased. Um, I've got four of them right now that I think I'm up to where the borrower's deceased. And <laughs> one, is, one, there was no will. One, I uh, haven't been able to get in contact, but they just sent a check for $3,800 in. So, um, you know, came from the heavens above, uh, sent me a check. So that's good. Um, for reinstatement. So it's nice when you can get a full reinstatement from something like that. Uh, and then another one um, where the wife was on, I have one where the wife was on the land contract and one where the wife wasn't on the land contract. So I'm trying to figure all that out. And um, so it's been. Yeah, I see if a spouse is on the land contract um, that. It automatically, in the case of the death of a spouse, is now that person's. Yeah. Um, but it's interesting. Like we were talking about community property and the way 
um, deeds are written. Um, there's two different possibilities. One is that two people are on a deed, one of them dies. By right of survivorship, you know, gives them automatically own, full ownership. Mm -hmm. But where there is not right of survivorship, you can have basically the, the person who has died, their share of the land contract or the deed, mm -hmm. you know, basically goes to the heirs, whatever the, the will says. And that may or may not mean that their spouse alone now has full ownership. So it's, uh, you actually um, reminded me uh, of something important to, re to remind everybody else about um, when Chris was contacted by the relatives of the person who died, um, you know, who wanted to discuss the loan. Um, what did you say, Chris? I asked, uh if there was a will and uh, if there was a death certificate, which they had the death, death certificate and I, you know, I saw on public records guy had passed away, but they didn't have a will. So I was like, unfortunately I can't discuss, um, you know, the property with you because uh, right now, um, you know, unfortunately by law I can't. So, um, you know, but in flip side, you know, it was one of those things where, um, I said, you know, the attorney will be sending something to the property for proper notice and so forth. And, you know, I didn't mention it, but if the person, you know, can read, you know, I know when I lost a parent, you know, when mail started coming um, in their name, first thing I, we did is, of course, we opened it um, to see what it said. So, um, you know, eventually I couldn't speak to him about it, but he's going to get more information from it just by the, if he opens the mail that was sent to his father. Uh, so. Right. Yeah. So this is just like the episode we did about talking to borrowers. If you make a call to a borrower and their spouse or their adult child or their coworker or anyone else answers, you can't even reveal that there is a debt, you know, and that you are the debt collector. You can't talk to anyone at all other than the actual borrower. So, very important. Hey, Patty, if you're still on, drum roll, I'll tell you what I bid on Yazoo. <laughs> you ready? I'm, I'm ready, but I'm nervous. Okay. So, <laughs> so my bid... I bid fourteen thousand, and at the time, he countered at seventeen, so I didn't accept it. Hey, that's not bad. What? I yeah, I got it for fifteen thousand five hundred. Wow, you beat them down. Sounds yeah, it. I guess. He would have paid seventeen. Hmm. Yeah, I would have paid. I would have paid fifteen five for that. It so. was under bankruptcy at the time. Did you know? Yes, that's why I wanted it. Yes, <laughs> and then. Um, just 15 days later, the bankruptcy got dismissed. Yeah. So. Cool. cool. Yep. So. But, but there are tax certificates on it worth three thousand seven hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. So yes. there's that. Yeah. <laughs> so your seventeen thousand probably <laughs> it's it's kind of almost the same now because I I still have to do the tax mm -hmm. certificate. And yeah, well, he would have had to do the tax certificates too. Yeah, we had them too and stuff. Yeah, he would no, have been up to that's, twenty. Yeah, when people just so people listening, you know, on and what was the UPB on that one, Patty, or the total payoff? I can't recall. Do you? Mm -hmm. I gotta find those documents. Yeah. Here. So, well, Patty's looking that up. Oh, go ahead. Sorry, no. I'll I'll take yeah. a minute to look into it. So meanwhile, Saki has asked, uh, am I pronouncing your name correctly? You can tell me in the, in the chat. Um, is it required to send a monthly notice to the borrower if you have forced place insurance on the property? No. Um, from my understanding, you at the beginning, when you are putting the insurance on, you send a very official letter um, that you can get from your insurance company that is the notification letter letting them know that because they have well letting them know that you because you don't have proof of insurance you're putting insurance on there and they are able and should get their own insurance to have better coverage at probably a better price 
And then 30 days later, you send another notice. Both notices ask them to submit proof of insurance. And if the second notice go, goes and they don't, then you are able to charge the insurance amount to the loan and you don't have to continue sending them notices. That's two notices and done. Oh, Matt, the re it's interesting though, because Madison does send the borrowers proof of insurance if you have them, like Madison collects escrow for me. Mm -hmm. um, Madison does send them um, letters for proof of insurance. So. Um, yeah, but not monthly, right? A monthly. Uh, I don't believe it's monthly. I think it might be like quarterly, but they do send out. And I'm actually logged in right now trying to see if I can find it. Um, so what are you talking about? Like they, they want content ongoing proof of insurance. They want you to, they want it submitted over and over again. So actually, let's see. They sent it on 530. They sent it on <laughs> four. Yeah, Madison said they'll only send if you get the insurance through them. Okay. Cheers, then. Uh, oh, is that what it is? Madison sends it if you get it through them. That's what it might be. I'm trying to think if I have one, actually. I so they to... keep a rating. If you have insurance from someone else, you do not have to send monthly notices. I mean, I guess. What, I, what I do is I send, you know, I, we had the... JB Lloyd, which I think gets published this week, was on. And, uh, you know, I print out when I create the insurance, I create, create the insurance, you know, declaration, whatever it is. I send that to Madison, and I know Madison does send that to the borrower. So they can mm -hmm. send the insurances and part of the escrow when they do the escrow. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can generate a notification that sh even if you're paying monthly on JB Lloyd, they'll. Mm -hmm they generate an, a, um, an annual premium mm -hmm. and that will get charged immediately to the loan. And then if the people get, um, get their own insurance, which in my experience never happens, um, you know, a lot of borrowers feel like, oh, hey, thanks for the insurance. Um, you know, and you don't really ever get the money back because I don't know if I'm just being cynical or I just haven't been in this business long enough, but no one's ever paid off their loan. So there's no, you know, oh, okay, here's your insurance money at the end. <laughs> I find it very hard to believe that I'm going to get an extra, you know, $5,000 after 15 years of paying for their insurance. Um, but I guess it could happen. Uh, and the other thing Patty asked about was if anyone has a borrower in prison. Uh, did either of you have a CFD one or one of borrowers in prison? I have one right now in prison. <laughs> um, I did have a note where uh, the gentleman was in prison for murdering his wife. Um, actually, he didn't murder. He hired two hitmen to murder his wife. Um, so I've had that. And I do have uh, a borrower okay. in prison right now as well. And we're in the process of doing the forfeiture on that. And actually, I just got a certified letter in the mail today um, that they didn't serve her. And I sent it to the attorney. I'm like, you may not have been able to serve her, but I think she's in prison and stuff. So they're going to retry. Yeah. So what do they do if your borrower's in prison and can't come to court or whatever? Yeah, we actually struck a cash for keys deal. So, but he needs to get the wife who was in prison to sign the cash for keys and he said he can so that's um you know what we're trying to wrap up because i've already pretty much paid for and filed the suit um so i told him like if i don't have it in the next week or so you know the case is over so the, you know and i've spent all the money on the legal so the cash for keys deal was based upon me not having to drop all this money on legal so we'll see how it pans out Right. So um, circling back to paperwork issues, um, Window Rock, or actually I guess it was Harbor in this case, um, these files, like we, it's very kind of troubling in a way that we make purchase decisions based on the electronic file of the collateral. Um, because you and I, Christopher, bought a vacant house in Oklahoma 
and we got we got the file and there was a cancellation of land contract in it so we thought we had a free and clear house and we set about to start selling it only to find out that there was a complete other set of borrowers that um whose after the land contract was canceled with the first couple they resold it to another couple and none of that information, the application, the land contract, none of that paperwork on this second set of borrowers was even in the electronic file. It was only when the big, fat, you know, hard file came to me that it was like, mm -hmm. oh my gosh. We then had to track down two people, a very young couple that hadn't even been married at the time they signed the land contracts and had a very bitter split up and you know trying to find them and trying to get them both to sign that was like really crazy but this is kind of why i mean i i do have attorneys with my own purchases i don't always have attorneys look at the files because i feel confident enough in my own ability to see unless there's something unusual or the title report flags a you know, a situation like there's no satisfaction of a previous mortgage or something like that. When I have JV deals, I do have an attorney just for, you know, just to do everything properly. I do have an attorney look at the file, but we're all kind of, you know, helpless in the face of like really badly kept files and incomplete files. Like you, you, you still really don't know, even, you know, until you get the hard file, you don't know. And then, like you're saying, there was a file missing from your hard file. Mm -hmm. So it's really crazy. Yeah. I've had some where you see assignment of land contract that, you know, Window Rock issued to another entity like a month before you're going to buy it. And then yeah. you go back and say, wait, you already sold this loan. And they're like, oh, no, that's not valid anymore. Those are all to that Western Alliance Bank. Western Alliance, they yeah. have some sort of corporate reason. They don't deed it to to Western Alliance, but they do an assignment of the land contract to Western Alliance. I have no idea why this is done, but I've seen it over and over and over again. So it's not real. It's just not like an internal thing. And in fact, you are buying it from Home Opportunity or Camelback or whoever it is, mm -hmm. Western Alliance. Mm -hmm. So go figure. <laughs> So Sylvia asked a question way out in left field um, compared to what we've been discussing tonight in regards to um, what is the Excel formula for performing note and figuring out the yield you want? Is it 12 top months times payments divided by the price? No. Um, <laughs> pop it open right now. Um, Gail, actually, you should know this. You just sent me the tape with this formula in it. I did. I did, did. But it was, I certainly didn't commit it to memory. Um, but I feel like let's hand this out because it's a little tricky to, uh, yeah. to explain if we're not all hunched over our Excels. It's what it is. It's a present value formula in Excel. Um, and I will just explain it briefly, um, but yeah, it's basically like taking your calculator, mm -hmm. like everybody does the mm -hmm. as a calculator, a financial calculator on your phone, mm -hmm. and you put in the values and it spits out the present value. Mm -hmm. Well, it's like putting that calculator into an Excel document. And yeah, take it away, Chris. Yeah. So what it is is it's present value, and then you pick the interest rate that you want so what percent return you want so say you want 12 percent it would be um 0.12 divided by 12 because it's 12 percent for a year and it's a monthly payment stream then the next uh form next component to that is i believe it's payment um actually let me just negative uh, it's I'm sorry. Yeah, the next one is number of periods. I'm sorry. So mm -hmm. what, what is the term of the loan? Uh, so say there's a hundred payments left uh, The third is the payment which would be a negative number, but here's the thing with the payment that I do is If they're paying 300 a month, I take out the servicing costs 
So say my servicing cost is 20 bucks a month. <laughs> um, I make it 280. So, you know, because that's really your true return because you are going to have those servicing costs. Um, so <laughs> when you're dealing with loans that are only like 150 bucks, I mean, those servicing costs will eat up a good percentage of that. So those are the three things. And then the future value will be zero because it will be paid off. So if you yeah, actually, so we're about to put out a tape. Everyone should sign up at um, gooddeedsnoteinvesting.com if you would like to receive the tape. Why don't we send out the tape with the NPER and the PV, the IRR <laughs> formula in there, and everybody can just look at it. We'll put it in there, and we can put yeah, it in there based that. on a 12% return. Here's what the price would be. So make it as easy as possible for people yeah well it's already in there like i you didn't see it i put it at the bottom yeah like, but when we send it out we don't usually we don't put that. The bottom <laughs> well we should leave it there because if people are making mm -hmm. offers it's a handy reference to see what yeah. a 12 percent yield what that price is a 15 percent yield yeah. what that price is yep so, <clears throat> so you can kind of get in the middle maybe Yep. So basically that's kind of your goal posts is probably where somewhere in between there is where you'd want to be. Yes. Chris has dragged me kicking and screaming into the world of math. So. <laughs> math in a, formulas in Excel documents. So I actually had someone tell me how frightened she was of Excel, you know, formulas. And I'm like, you know, yes, they are a little weird when you're just getting started, but they, boy, do they make your life easier once you, you know, screw up the courage to do it. I'm sure Patty's laughing because she's an engineer and like Chris, <laughs> and loves math. <laughs> I'm just so excited that I was using Airtable today and I got my whole systems all working and everything and I hit the button and it actually worked. So, Wow. Right. Yes. Well, maybe that's our next. Are you going to show everybody Airtable? I mean, I think not tonight. But that's I'll pretty advanced. A, like, yeah. I'll show a video of uh, the behind the scenes sneak preview of how I can manage the number of assets I can basically very quickly and simply, and report to everyone on a monthly basis, um, literally within a span of today. It took me to click on the button. I think it took me like 47 seconds to click on every single one to get it updated so it would send out an email. Um, so, yeah, that's... Uh, um, someone disturbingly told me on LinkedIn today that they have not been able to sign up on our website. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, I asked for details, but I don't have them yet. Did you want to talk about your condos in uh, Florida? So, yeah, we can briefly talk about those. Yes. So, uh, so I asked... Yep, somebody asked. So two condos, same community, 55 plus community uh, that I bought these, oh, just just about a little over a year ago. Um, I think it was like February of 2018. Uh, both of them, one was uh, an estate, so we knew it was deceased. The other borrower was living out in uh, Las Vegas. So uh, the plan was at the time basically knew we'd probably be taking these back so the bid definitely was focused on making sure we included foreclosure costs and everything unfortunately what the attorney told me it would cost and what the attorney actually charged me was about you know 40 percent more um but you know so and it took him an extra six months because of incompetence in my belief <laughs> <laughs> a lifelong problem of his i know somebody else had assets at the same time so um so yeah, but um, so both, so one of the things I told the attorney is don't have the foreclosure sale on the same day. It makes sense because if you had two people bidding, they wouldn't bid against each other. They just one pick one, one pick the other. Uh, of course, he had them the same day. Uh, one of them actually got bid on and um, was above my initial bid and they, um, you know, got it and stuff and, you know, I was messaging attorney and stuff. I'm like, okay, you know, how long till they close? Oh, they have to pay within 48 hours. So like three days later, I'm like, did they get the money? And then a week goes by, he doesn't respond. And I'm like, you know, he only responds when he wants to send you a bill. So he sends me a bill and uh, I respond back. 
thanks for the bill, but could you respond to my email from a week ago since you only respond when you send me a bill? I actually put that in the email because I'm at the point of I'm not anybody's friends. Uh, <laughs> so he was like, oh, you know, I'll have somebody check on that. But yeah, I must have funded by now. Comes back and is like, oh, yeah, the borrower didn't fund. And I'm like, oh, he's like, well, now we have to refile everything. And I'm like, well, it would have been nice if you did that kind of a week ago when, you know, you stayed on top of this. And then I'm like, what about the other one? Because it says when I go online that the deed is ready for that. Oh, let me have this person check. Oh, yeah, you're right. The deed was ready, been ready for over a week. Um, and it's like, yep. And it's one of these things where literally if you didn't stay on top of this attorney, I think it would take 25 years to foreclose with this guy and you'd be lucky then because unless you ask, it's like, Oh, that's right. We need to do that. It's like, yeah. you know, you're the attorney. Um, and I'll be happy to share who it is. Um, <laughs> online, but it is, I think on our basically shit list, um, that we have, for, um, for the toxic. Is that what we're calling that now? <laughs> uh, that's right. I'm sorry. I, you know, I don't think that's an appropriate word. I should say that. Um, the, so I'm in the process now of one of them actually goes back for sale at the end of July. And the one that I do have, um, I have an agent who got in both of them. Uh, the one that we got back has, um, had the water heater let go in it. So the first 18 inches of drywall, there's 750 square feet units, so they're not big. Um, so the 18 inches of drywall had been ripped out in the entire unit. Uh, and the carpet in the bedroom had been pulled out. Uh, it was, you know, it hasn't been updated since the eighties, um, but it does have beige tile, which, you know, beige tile has been around, you know, still forever. Um, but I've got, um, actually the neighbor, um, is interested in it and is supposed to, was supposed to go this week. And now they're going next week. Cause I guess the neighbor's brother wants to move there and he'd be right next door to his sister and he's a handyman. So he could... Hmm. It, take care of it so fingers crossed on that one um <laughs> and the ballpark price that we would sell it for would still net um you know a good you know probably about a 30 percent return so it would still be good um and in the other one actually doesn't really need a lot of work uh the bathroom needs a little bit of work and the kitchen um you know needs i put new cabinets in it and stuff but um the contractor today told me it'd be about thirty thousand dollars and i started <laughs> um you know, to put, you know basically paint some flooring in a bedroom and rip out some vanities and kitchen cabinets and put in new cabinets countertop um yeah, so I don't know where we got thirty thousand dollars from, but I'm looking at getting some pricing on that one, and I'll probably still, you know, my goal would be to have somebody just kind of do both of them. And um, you know, right now the ARVs, if we fix them up, is um, north of sixty to seventy thousand. So um, you know, if yeah, that's worth putting that, a little bit in. Yeah. So um, based on where I'm in them for um you know i got i could put some you know money into them and uh look to them or you know either also owner finance them or uh possibly put them as rentals as well so right so unfortunately patty left i was going to ask her what she's going to do with her horse huh? farm slash forest she's still here she's just on mute no no she said she had to leave oh okay gotta run sorry nice yeah. talking to you bye yeah. okay <laughs> So, all right. Yeah, you you still have her on the screen, but yeah. so, there's no one there. Yes. Does anyone else have any questions? Any comments? Things? Things we want to get to before we go? Hmm. Hmm. I guess not. Good. Any final thoughts, Gail? Before we wrap this episode up. Nope, I have a loudly snoring dog. Thank God they didn't say anything on this episode. I do apologize to everyone that they they drowned out key moments in uh, Beth Voiceo's uh, <laughs> um, presentation. I, I have a new plan. Whenever they start, I'm just going to mute myself, and I'll just stop talking, and Chris knows to take it from there. So. 
my final thoughts for this evening is I got to give props to the St. Louis Blues who beat my Boston Bruins last night in Game Seven of the Stanley <laughs> Cup. You know, as a Boston sports fan, having been raised up in Massachusetts, um, we've had very successful run of late in sports. Really? Um, you know, I guess you can't win them all, but yeah, you want them all, but you can't have them all. Yeah, but it's good to see St. Louis. Um, you know, basically, you know, win their first Stanley Cup, and you know, I was hoping that I would have had that note under agreement because the one I showed a little while ago about knocked down um, is in St. Louis, so it would have been perfect. Like, hey, celebrate the cup by knocking this house down. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, so particularly because it would be from a Massachusetts boy. It would be very gratifying to them. It's still uh, actually not a bad idea to put on Craigslist to say, <laughs> hey, I'm a Bruins fan. I need some. Uh, blue Wait, that, demo house for me but that's a row house like isn't it attached to the house next to it no, like, it's not. It's detached. No. all right well still people should not be wailing away i mean i have a little stick you know i have the little wooden house that the three little pigs you know the the wolf could blow down so, by huffing and puffing yours is not that kind of house i'll tell you we you know we built our house and we demolished a house that was here before us. And I'll tell you, that was like the greatest day. Just like <laughs> so fun. the excavator come and just like, you know, in, in the dump trucks come and it's just like, you know, literally just slice right through it. And it's like, ah, you know, it's, it's <laughs> interesting. you're like Shiva, the destroyer. Shame on you. I'd love to see a picture of that house. Was it like a really bad little house? No, actually it wasn't. And what it was is they had updated the kitchen like a few years prior. And yeah. it is, we donated everything we could. Um, yeah. And one woman was moving to um, Africa and my wife works for an international organization. So a woman who I think may have worked with her or whatnot, but um, had come and literally filled up a container she took like the garage doors. She took the windows. She took, um, I think she took the kitchen and the countertop as well. Um, we had one guy come in to take, he took all the recessed lights in the house and hmm. he ripped up the wood. They had wood and cherry floor in it. He came and it was the old, you know, two and a quarter inch wood floor. Mm -hmm. uh, he came and he ripped all of it up and took it. And I'm like, the guy was there for three days ripping this floor up. And I was like, oh my God, this guy's like... Oh, but the woman, oh, the woman took, um, she took the toilet, the shower heads. I mean, she was taking everything. <laughs> Good <Lord. laughs> Stripped <Yeah>. it clean. <laughs> so, but it was nice because it was like, hey, you know, people, you can have it for free because all it's going to do is fill a dump truck and cost us more money. So, right. uh, no, I've got yeah. to. So. Yeah, and I hope people already know that the ha Habitat for Humanity has mm -hmm. um, like salvage stores in almost every major city. Mm -hmm. And even where they don't, um, like I'm rehabbing a house um, down south and because there are a lot of historical homes in the area that get rehabbed, they, there's actually like several salvage stores where they have doors, windows, flooring, just piles and piles of flooring, metal gates and everything. So never think that what you have doesn't have value and that it can't be sold. I had to leave my Birmingham house intact because I was charging the king's ransom of $500 for it, so I was not able to remove anything from it. Um, but yeah, if, you're, uh, if you have a teardown and it's got some good stuff in it, by all means do what Chris did and let people strip it down for you and there won't be so much to haul away. So, uh, are, you, uh, are you playing a game now? Nope, there you go. That's a back. Okay, not up yet. Hm. Not pop up. It's not coming from me. Oh, wait, there it is. Oh, okay, yeah. That's the back of it. That's a very, you know, that's a very dated design, but they upgraded things, huh? Where, where there's the so there's red deck and where the, there was a big concrete patio there, but they, yeah. had a, they built that specifically for a koi pond. They had like a big, <laughs> no, it was like, it was a koi breeding thing that they had um, uh, basically like, it was like a big, just container <laughs> that was like, had a top on it and I guess they bred koi in it. And 
they left it. So like, so we lived in the house for um, about a year and a half because we wanted to get design the house and so forth and so on. Um, but after we closed, they left it and they're like, like, hello, are you going to like come get this thing? You know? And I guess we talked to somebody and they're like, Oh, it's worth, it was like, yeah, that's worth like 2000 bucks. And I'm like, tell going back to the person, I'm like, if this ain't gone by the weekend, we're going to sell this thing. Cause someone will come take it. Um, but, uh, so yeah, that was. Um, Did you sell it? <laughs> no, they came and got it. So, ah, okay. Just so uh, it didn't have fish in it, right? I, I don't. No, it was empty. Um, <laughs> uh, no, you have to have the cover on it because the raccoons will eat the koi. Yeah. And uh, you have so many foxes. I'm sure they yes, might like koi. So, uh, yeah. We did get a question pop up from Sylvia. Oh my. Western Alliance. Business purposes only. Yeah. Yeah, that whole Western Alliance collateral file. I, I don't know what that's for. I actually was just looking at the Western Alliance collateral file next to the regular collateral file. And I thought, surely this will only have an assignment in it. And it'll be one or two pages longer than the regular collateral file. But it wasn't. It was much longer than the regular collateral file. So I thought it wasn't like... As I was saying to Patty, like if it was important, if I was trying to do something legal, maybe I would delve into it or have have Orion delve into it for me. But I'm just I'm not going to try and figure out the madness of Western Alliance and all that. Typically what I've <laughs> in the past is they'll say that it's an error, please discard it. Um so that way, yes. So I had a, an attorney look at a file. Yeah, an attorney look at a file, and he was like, "Well, you're going to need you need that deed to Western Alliance, and then you need a deed from Western Alliance to you." <laughs> it's like I was going to not show him that stuff in the future and just be like, <laughs> forget the Western Alliance. It's like fake. So anyway, alrighty. Wow. Good. Well, I think that's a wrap for this episode. I would like to thank everyone who joined us tonight and also like to thank you all who do listen to podcasts for your support. Um, we are just wrapping up our 20,000th download. So, and to give you an idea, that was our goal for like a year and we've been doing this now for six months. So we've kind of, you know, exceeded our expectations, but uh, it's because of all of you. So thank you for spreading the word out there and uh, make sure if you could also leave us a review on iTunes and Stitcher and we will be putting out a tape uh, next week. So if you are registered um, for you know, the webinar or the podcast, um, you will be getting that 48 hours in advance. So there'll be some performing, non-performing assets on it. Uh, we haven't finalized the count yet. I got to go through my assets and look at some that um, I'm looking to move. Um, but yeah, anything else? Katie? Yes. And if you have any trouble signing up, um, as we heard, you might please let us know. Uh, it's very hard to keep up with all these technologies. Um, and then uh, maybe I don't think that had anything to do with the hack. We were hacked. We're unhacked well, now. Yeah, it may have been when we were hacked. Um, yeah. One thing I'll mention is next week uh, we might be shifting from Zoom to Demio. So it may be a new week, a new link starting next week, but also it will allow for multiple uh, registrations. Um, so you don't have to just register each week. I believe you will be able to register for, you know, five at a time or 50 of them or whatever that may be. So um, in the works on that, uh, and Gail's laughing at me, but. Um, no, I was thinking it was for life. You sign up once, you'll never be rid of us. We'll just always be <laughs> emailing you on Thursdays. But um, you'll still get the emails for notifications and stuff, but it may be a new link. So for people who are on right now, just uh, pay attention and, um, you know, because you might not be able to go back to find the link from last week or whatnot. Uh, so that's all. Great. Thanks, everybody. Go out and do some good deeds. Thank you.